Peace be upon you. It's larger than Lebanon, Qatar, and Bahrain combined. Djibouti. Djibouti's strategic location in the Horn of Africa. This is Djibouti and that's Yemen over there. This strait is full of ships. This is Bab el-Mandeb Strait. Djibouti is an Arab country with Somali heritage. Its capital is the city of Djibouti. Welcome to Djibouti! This is the unknown Arab country, Djibouti. So are we now in Djibouti or Yemen? No, Djibouti. This spot in Djibouti is the second lowest point on Earth, a place which we drove to only two hours away from the capital. This place is all salt, similar to the Dead Sea. Peace be upon you. How are you? Fine, thank you. Why Mr. Milhdan? He said it's 500. I am the only customer in here. So I will buy this. This salt is very fresh. They dig it in there and they sell it in here. But the number of tourists here is zero. But the question is, why no one visits Djibouti? Like in Jordan. This is Djibouti, the number two in the world, but number one as the lowest place in Africa. Let's see, our friend here sells salt. Like Asal, salt, Asal. Like in Bolivia, the largest salt flat in the world. This is Djibouti. Djibouti is unknown to many people, despite its powerful strategic location. By Bab el Mandeb's trade, from the Indian Ocean, to the Gulf of Aden, to the Red Sea, which is a trade gateway to Africa. This made global powers compete to have a foothold in Djibouti. Foreign military bases. There are many military bases, French, American and Japanese, and recently, China established its only military base outside of China, in Djibouti, under its new Silk Road project. And all these powers say that the main goal in being there is to protect their ships that pass from here, the whole global trade. Peace be upon you. Also fighting terrorism and the protection of the most important global trade routes from pirates. Greater Somalia. Djibouti. <laughs> we are in Djibouti today, mashallah. We made it, bro. We made it. We made it in Djibouti. <laughs> bro, he has to pass. <laughs> We're going with Turkish Airlines. Greater Somalia. Let's see. I don't know yet. We'll be hosted by someone called Qais. Five hours to arrive, in the name of Allah. We submitted a request to join the Arab League. It joined the Arab League in 1977, after its independence from France in the same year, 1977. Then people revolted to get their freedom. They made banners. They wrote everywhere, independence, we want freedom, we want freedom, the people. Its official languages are Arabic and French. People here speak many languages. It's written in Arabic, Djibouti Bawadima. Like Somali, Afar, Arabic and French. They speak Arabic, Afar, uh, Somali and French, but the most common language is French. French? How many languages do you speak? I speak Arabic and Somali, but I don't know French. So Somalis are the majority. Yes, they are. So you're Somali? Yes, I am. Uh, Where did you learn Arabic? I used to live in Saudi Arabia. I was born there. What a pleasure. She was born in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> From Riyadh? Exactly. Riyadh, okay. When I speak in the Saudi dialect, no one understands it. Nobody understands it? Nobody. If I speak standard Arabic or in Yemenese dialect, they understand. But many people here speak Arabic. A lot of them. They even teach it in schools. Oh, they teach it? Yes, they you do. You don't have to learn it abroad. It's not necessary. They teach it in school. <laughs> oh, 
How many languages do you speak? I speak Somali, Afar, Arabic, Amharic, French and English. All praise be to Allah. It is Muslim with about a million inhabitants. Most of them are Afar, Isa, who are Somalis, and some Yemeni Arabs. Somal, Afar, Arab. These are the Somali wedding traditions. You'll find wedding traditions of Arabs, Afar, and Somalis. So this is Somali. You want a Djiboutian wife? A wife? <laughs> he said only a wife is left. We showed you the Somali culture. Of course, we have to show you the Afar also. So, they invited us. This is the groom's car behind me. They married me off in Djibouti. We, we have three cultures. Arabi, Afari, Somali. We smile together. We eat together. We dance together. Djibouti! 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 Peace be upon you. Afar and their Afar language, their traditions are close to Arabs. You can find them in Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Djibouti. This is the Afar tribe's traditional attire. Djibouti is like visiting several countries. They found me a wife too from Djibouti. <laughs> this is Djibouti. My friend, he got married uh, tonight. Congratulations. He got married to wives. There must be a Somali, Afar, and Arab minister. This is Djibouti. Djibouti. The most mysterious country, man. One of the best beautiful countries. Djibouti. Amazing diversity. I am Somali uh, in Djibouti. If you are Somali, uh, you are Djiboutian. If you are Yemeni, you are Djiboutian. Even if you came Yemen yesterday, you are Djiboutian. And if you are Amfari, and even if you came, you know, uh, Eritrea or Ethiopia yesterday, you are Djiboutian. Riyadh. Can you imagine it's called Riyadh Market? There's a Saudi Arabia neighborhood and a holy Mecca neighborhood. Saudi Arabia is very spread here because it built a lot here. It contributed a lot in building in Djibouti. So, Yemenis, what's their story in Djibouti? You have a nice ride. How did they become citizens here? As we're walking in the streets, we found them selling gat. Yemeni food. We'll have fish. All of it. Yemeni fish. In the name of Allah. Let's go. Beit al Mandi is right behind me. We're in Djibouti. Yemen is very close to us, just a boat through Bab al Mandab. Did you see the strait? Yemen is close, so the Yemeni culture has its effects on the streets and on food. So the Sheikh invited us here. This is for you. <laughs> <laughs> the best gift. <laughs> the best gift. What's on the menu today? The owner of the restaurant. Today we have popular meals. There's fish, mendi meat, mendi chicken. Djibouti is very influenced by Yemen's food? Yes, it's Yemeni food. It's a Yemeni restaurant. It's close. You can swim to it. Just a stone's throw just away. Just a stone's throw yes. away. Fish from the sea, look. Our fish has arrived, guys. Look at it. It's like shish tawuk dish. It's sliced in a very nice way and it's eye-catching. The orange color seems real. Among the finest types of fish, 
and the tastiest. He said you don't need rice. It's very soft. Look how they sliced it. Tell me it's not mouth-watering. <laughs> In the name of Allah. Bon appétit. Oh my God, it's been a long time, I swear. <laughs> what kind of fish is this? Every Friday? Yes. Every Friday, mashallah. <laughs> the tastiest fish I've ever had, honestly. We're in Djibouti, but it looks like we're in Hadramaut. The largest expatriate community here is Yemeni, and it's been here for a very long time. You'll find that in most restaurants, food is Yemeni. Today, we've prepared for you Mendi of Hadramaut. We're in Hadramaut. Come. Come, my dears. I have a Djiboutian passport, a Djiboutian ID, and I was born here. Afar, Arabs and Somalis are one nation in Djibouti. My name is Nasri Nasser. I was born in Djibouti. Maybe our origin is Yemeni, but we were born in Djibouti. I'm more Djiboutian than Yemeni because I grew up here and I speak Somali, Arabic, French, and a little English. This plant is called gat. It's widespread in Yemen, Somalia, Ethiopia, and Djibouti. The one they put here, which always bloats up the mouth. It's like stimulants. Using kata gives you energy. You'll also feel uh, relaxed. You'll feel like the whole land is yours. Crossing the air and sea, but when it ends, you get sad. This is how you do it. Like this, it's a problem. Two is a problem, but one is okay. The more you add, the more it stimulates you. You'll be so relaxed. They put it in their mouths, they chew it, and they store it. They store it here. This is the cause of Yemen's destruction. No, it has nothing to do with that. <laughs> it's not an addiction, but we got used to the fact that when we use it, we relax from work stress and other things. Cat relaxes us. Some people relax looking at the sea, and others travel. They go to Egypt or Dubai. We're not able to do that like others. So a bit of cat to rest till the sunset. Feeling like a prince. My family is in Yemen. You send them money? Yes, it's not enough, but praise be to Allah. I also have a daughter with Down syndrome. I hope I can find a cure. Many Yemenis work here. Because salaries in Djibouti are much higher than in Yemen. When will the disease clear from you? Oh, my country, when will this criminal, QAT, be executed? Yes. This is the Yemeni neighborhood. Djiboutians of Yemeni origins. Yes. Everybody wears this in Yemen? Yes, all Yemenis wear it. Is it only for weddings in Yemen? No. According to Yemen traditions, you have to wear it daily. Daily? Yes, daily. Going out like this? To the supermarket? It's normal. Also the Kalashnikov. Is it authentic? Of course. Yemen is the origin of Arabs? Of course. We all belong to Yemen. To Yemen, yes. All this Arabs. This is called Jambia. Jambia? Yes, Jambia. It's embroidered with gold. The Yemeni attire. For little girls, mashallah. Peace be upon you. Her name is Mulk al Yemen. And that one is Malak. When is this used? This should never be used unless, if it gets out, it goes with We're blood. We're peaceful. She's Djiboutian, of Yemeni origins. Sometimes Djibouti is considered as a gas station. Ships put gas and leave. Biggest vessels in the world. It has seven ports. Look at the huge container ship all coming through here. This is Babel Mandeb Strait. And this is the sea. And Babel Mandeb Strait. Look at me. I'm the captain now. I'm the captain now. He's the captain now. You can find islands of Maldivian beauty on your way there. They'll think we're pirates. All are competing to establish military bases in it and build a port there 
The train passes from here, which takes directly to Addis Ababa. This is the train to Ethiopia. The French built it. Then the Chinese finished it. Five hours from here. Five hours from here to Addis Ababa. All merchandise comes through the ports here, get loaded into trains, which takes to Addis Ababa. They're all renting places, taking an area of the sea and paying the country. 75% of the country's income from the sea, the ports, and renting military bases for other countries and they pay, like China, which pays $100 million yearly to Djibouti. But we are a getaway of a big market in the region. We're in downtown now. I'm the Djiboutian, fond of challenges and fond of all kindness, realizing the dream as serious as a flood. I'm the poet, Abdul Warith Ali Adam. People call me the poet of beauty. Thank you.